Have you heard about an eye condition called keratoconus? Do you know that keratoconus is mainly diagnosed in the adolescence and results in a significant vision impairment? Have you heard about quality of life questionnaires in medicine? By the end of this podcast, you'll know what keratoconus is, how to diagnose it, and some treatments. What a quality of life questionnaire is, and how researchers use this questionnaire to assess quality of life and treatment outcomes. First, I will give a brief introduction about keratoconus, and then I will chat with Dr. Himal Kandel, a research associate at the University of Sydney Safe Site Institute, who will tell us about quality of life questionnaires in keratoconus. I am Maria Cabrera Aguas, a researcher at the University of Sydney Safe Site Institute. Welcome to the Sydney Eye Podcast. Before we kick off our episode today, I want to say that I'm very grateful to you for the positive response to this podcast. In the last month, about 50 people told me that they have shared the podcast with family, friends and colleagues. I was so happy to hear this because my goal is to educate everyone about eye conditions and share the research and the latest news on eye health. Please keep sharing this podcast with family, friends, and colleagues. Also consider subscribing to the podcast to receive a notification when a new episode is released. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and YouTube. Keratoconus means cone-shaped cornea. It is a disease of the cornea. But first, let's remember that the cornea is the transparent front part of the eye and is normally round. This disease results in thinning of the central part of the cornea. As it progresses, the normal eye pressure causes the round shape of the cornea to deform and an irregular cone-like bulge develops resulting in significant visual impairment. The onset of this disease occurs between the ages of 8 and 45. A recent Australian population-based study reported that 1 in 84 young adults has keratoconus. It is a progressive disorder affecting both eyes, although only one eye may be affected initially. Clinical signs vary depending on the severity of the disease. Initial symptoms are blurred vision and distortion of vision. As the disease progresses, the patient may suffer of increased blurring and short sightedness, light sensitivity, halos, and flaring around light sources that make difficult driving at night. Keratoconus is usually diagnosed at clinical examination, under slit lamp, corneal topography, or with other instruments. Treatments include wearing glasses or contact lenses in early stages and to maintain vision long term. In severe cases, surgery such as cross-linking or corneal transplantation may be needed. All these treatments affect the quality of life of the patient to some extent. Some tests such as visual acuity, refraction and corneal topography are available to assess the impact of keratoconus and treatment outcomes. However, quality of life cannot be directly measured as visual acuity, for example. Therefore, the special questionnaires, also called patient-reported outcome measures, have been created to measure quality of life in keratoconus. To talk more about this type of questionnaires, I have invited Dr. Himal Kandel, who is a postdoctoral research associate at the University of Sydney Safe Site Institute. Himal studied optometry in Nepal. Later, he pursued a Master of Public Health for Eye Care at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine in the UK and completed his PhD at Flinders University in Adelaide. Welcome, Himal, and thank you so much for joining us in our show today. Thank you for having me, Maria. Well, Himal, before talking about quality of life questionnaires in keratoconus, Can you tell us what a quality of life questionnaire is and what is its purpose? Sure. 
Um, quality of life questionnaire is a tool that allows us to measure different aspects of quality of life. For example, if we want to know the impact of an eye disease on different aspects of quality of life, or if we want to know the benefits of treatments on quality of life, uh, the quality of life questionnaire allows us to do so. Uh, measuring quality of life or happiness or love, this kind of uh, abstract constructs is a bit more complex than measuring length or weight, but a uh, high quality questionnaire can allow us to uh, measure them uh, in a scientific way. All right, and, and how, for, for, for Creative Commons, for example, how did you and your team design the questionnaire? Because I suppose it's not the same if you have other kind of eye conditions. Mm -hmm. um, for character corners, uh, we first conducted a, a comprehensive systematic review to identify what questionnaires are, uh, we also call them patient reported outcome measures, what, what are available. And then we found that character corners outcomes research questionnaire was one of the best um, questionnaire available for character corners. This was originally developed by Professor Conrad Pesudops and his team. Uh, but the way these questionnaires are developed is, um, first of all, the, the quality of life issues are identified through in-depth consultation with patients and experts in keratoconus. And then a pilot questionnaire is developed uh, from those issues and then uh, later validated and, and the final form is then uh, developed. So this is the standard process, how it is uh, developed. And, uh, and the keratoconus outcomes research questionnaire has also followed the same standard process. Um, how did you evaluate this questionnaire in our context? Was it a was it um, Sydney context or Australia wide? Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, so since we found the keratoconus outcomes research questionnaire was one of the best for keratoconus, and we use it in our safe site keratoconus registry, a database um, uh, of patients with keratoconus. So we use it in the registry to collect. Um, um, quality of life data from patients routinely. And, but uh, when a questionnaire is used in a, uh, yeah, in, in a certain population, it has to be validated first. And uh, we have to make sure that it is working well. Uh, so we, we did a RAS analysis, which is a modern psychometric method to evaluate the performance of questionnaire. So we did RAS analysis and we, we found that it worked really well. But how, how do you... How do you conclude it worked well? Based on what parameters or what results? Now, that's a very good question. Uh, RAS analysis allows us to um, evaluate a number of properties of a questionnaire uh, in terms of how it is working. Um, so uh, as I told you earlier, quality of life is a complex construct, but it has to uh, a measure, if we want to measure anything, it has to follow certain measurement principles. So, so it uh, rationalizes what it does is it evaluates whether those measurement criteria are followed, um, are properly followed or not. So how long is, um, is this questionnaire? How long does it take for a patient to complete the questionnaire? Uh, the character corners outcomes research questionnaire, it has 29 items, 29 questions. Okay. Uh, with four to five, four response options. Uh, so yeah, since the quest, questions are worded in a very simple way and then same response options are used for all questions, uh, it, it, we found that it only took uh, in, on average two to three minutes for filling out the questionnaire. So it is pretty quick. Mm, okay, so for example, how, uh, what, what questions do you have in this questionnaire? Uh, there are 18 questions uh, measuring one aspect of quality of life called activity limitations, that is day-to-day uh, -day functioning. Uh, so those questions if, uh, measure uh, how the person is doing in day-to-day -day functioning or how keratoconus is affecting their day-to-day -day functioning. And there are other 11 questions on symptoms um, about what is the status of um, symptoms like glare, um, dry eye, uh, that kind of things. Um, so there are, altogether there are 29 um, items measuring two aspects of quality of life. More on quality of life in Keratoconus up next. But first, we have a question for you, the listeners. Have you heard about the quality of life questionnaire before? Email us at seedipodcast 
at gmail.com or share on Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag SeedIPod. That's hashtag S-Y-D-E-Y-E-P-O-D. Well, Himal, you know that, that patients sometimes are asked to complete many forms in the clinic. What would be the advantages for patients to complete this questionnaire? Uh, That's a very good question. Again, um, there are a number of advantages of using the quality of life questionnaire and uh, having the quality of life data. Uh, Just like other clinical tests, such as visual equity or refraction, it's important to find out how a disease is impacting on person's quality of life. After all, main aim of healthcare, whatever we do in healthcare, is to improve patients' quality of life. Um, So this this is... uh, this. Measuring quality of life should be part of comprehensive outcome measurement. And it is also an opportunity for patients to be involved in their own care. And it is uh, really important to understand patients' perspectives as we have found that sometimes patients and clinicians' perspectives can differ and uh, the questionnaires can fill that gap. And um, it's all when we can identify the patient's needs using the validated questionnaires, and it can lead to new treatments as well. So there are a number of advantages of using this uh, uh, quality of life questionnaire. In what type of healthcare settings can patients access to these questionnaires? Um, That's a very good question again. I think um, in ideal situation, uh, just like any other clinical test, it's important to measure uh, or or collect quality of life data, but um, it obviously doesn't happen in the real, real world. But at Safe Site Keratoconus Registry, we, uh, we most, many clinicians collect quality of life data uh, in, uh, in every clinical visit. Uh, so there are different ways it can be done. Uh, at, uh, in our registry, uh, they can fill, the patients can fill out the questionnaire when they're waiting to see their doctors uh, in paper or in iPad. That's how generally it is done. But now they can also get a link and um, complete it in their own device. Uh, yeah, th- there are various ways depending upon their uh, circumstance, de- depending upon the situation, there are different ways uh, of filling out the questionnaire. It is self-administered, so patients com- complete themselves, but uh, they, the questionnaire can be administered in different ways. There are some good options here, but I, I suppose at this point, only research healthcare settings can provide this to a patient, right? Um, that's right. Um, so those who are, uh, I mean, our safe site keratoconus registry uh, probably will talk about the registry in the later episodes, but um, uh, the, our registry is collecting the real world data in the clinics and uh, which is, u- the data is used for both research as well as for clinical practice. Um, so at, at the safe site keratoconus registry, we collect quality of life data and main, uh, it has been very, uh, useful because uh, clinicians can compare what quality of life aspects have been affected. It's not just uh, for research purpose, but also for clinical decision making. Mm-hmm. They can look at, uh, okay, um, compared to the last clinical visit, how is the patient doing in uh, um, different quality of life areas? So it has already been, uh, they have already started using it for clinical purpose as well, but um, not all clinicians uh, at the moment use quality of life questionnaire uh, or quality of life data to uh, inform their clinical decision making. Mm, Okay. Um, So do you think patients could ask their ophthalmologists or optometrists if they have these questionnaires? Or do you think these um, ophthalmologists or optometrists will always provide these questionnaires to patients? Usually it is uh, the clinicians, ophthalmologists or optometrists who administer the questionnaire to patients. But um, if a patients are uh, well informed and if they um, uh, understand the advantage of, uh, um, of um, filling out the quality of life questionnaire, the, uh, questionnaire um, definitely they can be the conversation starter. And um, in that way, clinicians will, uh, will I think, uh, will be uh, we, we will be forced to use the quality of life. <laughs> so yeah. I, I think it's, it's a good starting point as well. So Okay, so just to finalize, do you think that the um, ophthalmologists or optometrists should incorporate this into their f- clinical practice? That would be the aim in the future to all, yeah, also yeah. have them in their 
practice? Yeah, so this uh, patient reported outcome measurement or quality of life measurement uh, is an emerging field and it is growing very rapidly. So in the, in the, in the near future, we, we can um, expect more clinicians, more optimization of ophthalmologists using the uh, quality of life tools in their norm, uh, routine clinical practice. And, uh, and um, definitely, it's, I would be very happy if, if it is sooner than later. Uh, but it's going to happen. And uh, many um, uh, regulatory bodies like Food and Drug Administration, FDAs and um, other, other regulatory bodies are also prom promoting, uh, recommending the use of quality of life um, uh, data uh, in, the, in the routine clinical practice as well. So it's definitely happening in the future. Well, uh, Himal, thank you um, so much for sharing this project with us today. If people want to contact you, what would be the best way to do it? Via email or social media? Uh, either would be fine. Uh, on social media, I'm on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, so any, any way is fine. I'm, I'm approach, very approachable, I think. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. To recap, Keratoconus is an eye condition in which the cornea has a cone-like shape as a result of thinning of the cornea. Normally it is diagnosed in the adolescence and is progressive until the age of 40. Initial symptoms are blur vision and distortion of vision. Keratoconus is usually diagnosed at clinical examination under a slit lamp or other instruments. In early stages, glasses or contact lenses can correct the distortion in vision. Surgery such as cross-linking or corneal transplantation may be needed in severe cases. The progression of the disease and its treatments affect the quality of life of the patient. Vision acuity, refraction or corneal topography assess the impact of keratoconus but not the impact in the patient's quality of life. The Keratoconus Outcomes Research Questionnaire has been used to measure quality of life in patients with keratoconus. It is a short and self-administered questionnaire available in clinics enrolled in the SafeSide Keratoconus Registry, for example, um, the Sydney Eye Hospital. If you are an eye health professional and would like to enroll in this registry, send us an email and the registry staff will contact you. I am Maria Cabrera Aguas. Thanks for listening to the Sydney Eye Podcast. If you haven't yet subscribed to this podcast, you are invited to do so to receive a notification when a new episode is released. Please keep sharing this podcast with family, friends, and colleagues. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please send them to sidipodcast at gmail.com and connect with us on Twitter at Cabrera Marie. It's C A B R E R A M A R I E or at Corneal Research using the hashtag S Y D E Y E P O D or on Instagram at Dr. Maria Cabrera. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.